Hello, in this video, I'm going to be explaining how you can get your old, um, Google login, client ID, and client secret from the Google Cloud dashboard to integrate Google Oath or Google login in your website. Now, I'm going to be using this with Auth0, but you can do this with any other type of platform when you want to integrate Google login. Now, I'm not going to go into the code of integrating it, but just how you can get the client ID and client secrets. Now, in Auth0, if you're using Auth0, you want to create the social um, connection for Google or the Gmail. Let's continue, and now you'll have this list of things where you would want to enter the client ID or the client secret, and you allowed mobile ID, client IDs. Now, to get the client ID and client secret, what you want to do is, first of all, make a new project. Um, you can call it anything. Once it's created, um, Once it's created, I'm going to go into that project and, well, just go back to the home page. And now you want to go to APIs and services. Now go here and then go to credentials. And when you go here, you want to create credentials and you want to create an OAT client ID. Click on this and now it's going to ask you to configure your consent screen. So press that and what you want to do is press external or internal based on what you want. If you're going to make a login just for people in your organization, you want this. But for the most use case, you want anyone with a Google account to access this. So you want to press external. Now you create. Then you can put your app name. Um, call my video. Then you want to put in your email. I'll put mine. And then you want to put an app logo if you want. And... And then what you want to do is put your app domain. These are actually optional, so you should be fine, I think. Then you want to put your authorized domains. These are the domains that you want um, Oath to be accessed from. Since I'm using Auth0, my authorized domain would be Auth0.com, but it would just be the name of your website. So if you have other other like websites you own, you want to put your domain of that too. So my website. You want to put your name of your website as well here. And then. If I save, okay, I just put my email. So once you did that, you can save and continue. Now here you can put what other types of data you want to access. Now you don't want to, I mean, unless you want to access any sensitive data, you can just leave this as is. So next, you can put in some test users. Um, this is only needed if your, um, if your app needs to be verified. So here you can put in the emails of people that should be allowed to access your website. So yes. You can add in as many test users as you want. And once that's done, you can go, you can pretty much save it and go back to dashboard. There's no save button. Just click back to dashboard. Once you go back, you have your know, thing configured. Then you want to go back to credentials, create credentials, or client ID. And for the application type, it would be the type of application you're using. And since I'm using Auth0 actually, even if I'm making a mobile app or any other type of app, you just want to press web application. Now if you're making a native app for something else, you want to press, press the platform you're making it. But since I'm using Auth0, I only need a web client ID. So just press web application and then create. Oh, and actually before that, you need to add a authorized JavaScript origin and a redirect URI. So in the case of Auth0, if you go to the documentation here, your um, JavaScript origins would be your domain. You can get your domain by going to applications and clicking on your app settings. Here you can get your domain and for your HTTPS for your redirect URI, it would be the exact same thing except you want to add in slash login slash callback. And this is the case of Auth0. If you're using some different um, login integration, you want to refer to that guide to get your JavaScript origin and your redirect URI. Now, once you did that, you can save, 
and now you will be able to find your client ID and client secret by clicking on it and you will be able to find it here so this is my client ID now this goes um, back a certain connection Facebook connection Google so now this would go right here client ID client secret and go right here and for mobile oh yeah so for mobile actually you want to make another one if you're using a mobile app you want to make another client ID for say iOS app so you want to put an you know, iOS app and here you just want to put in your bundle ID your bundle ID for the iOS app you can find it in Xcode it will be in a file called info.plic and you can find in your bundle ID in that file um, it will look it will look it will be here in your info.plic file it will be something like com dot dot app name something like that it will be like a URL like a little list URL um, that would be a bundle ID. Once that's done, you can create and you'll get your client ID for mobile and you can just paste that here and that would be it. Now you have configured it for your um you have configured it, configured Google um for iOS and web audio integration.